Hey guys, John V here from Phone Arena. Right now you're watching our in-depth video review of the Google Nexus 10. It's available right now. You can pick it up for $400 for the base 16 gigabyte model. And it features the new Android 4.2 Jelly Bean experience. But even better is just the specs it's packing under the hood. First of all, you're getting a dual core Exynos processor with two gigabytes of RAM. But the most exciting part about this guy, it has the highest resolution display on a tablet, even beating out the iPad's retina display. So it's pretty impressive in that aspect. And knowing that it's $400, it's quite attractive too at the same time. So we're gonna find out how it fares and whether or not this is a tablet you want to take a look at this upcoming holiday season. It doesn't boast the flashiest or most intricate design we've seen in the tablet, but nevertheless, the Google Nexus 10 has a very modest appearance to it, especially taking into consideration the price point that they're after with this guy here. Now, when it comes to just holding the hand, it still requires two-handed operation just because it feels rather unwieldy uh, with one hand, and you can tell with the bezel around the display here, it's a little bit close to one inch, which kind of increases its overall footprint, but regardless of that, it still has a very skinny uh, profile here, um, and also evenly distributed with its weight so it gives it that good sturdy feel in the hand. The construction's decent and we definitely like the uh, soft touch matte casing it has in the back. It gives it a very clean appearance. It doesn't exhibit any smudges or debris like that and it's broken up with this uh, this dotted pattern design of the top casing right here. So overall definitely liking the modest design and considering the price point again as we said uh, it's pretty good. So prior to this guy, the iPad really set the bar with its retina display, making it the highest resolution display on a tablet. But now, with the introduction of the Google Nexus 10, it redefines it and blows it out of the water. So it's featuring a 10-inch True RGB Real Stripe PLS display, and its uh, resolution is just mind-blowing. It's at actually... Uh, 2560 by 1600 pixels, which equates to a pixel density of 300 pixels per inch for a tablet. And honestly, it is stunning. Everything has just a lot of sharpness, good clarity. Uh, so for things like reading a book or even surfing the web, it's just uh, ridiculous at how sharp looking this this uh, display is. Um, and easily, uh, re it really sets the benchmark in, uh, in what we expect out of $400 price tablets. In addition to that, seeing that it's a PLS display, it has a little bit of saturation with its color reproduction of good vibrancy, adds to its uh, nice appeal, some wide viewing angles, and a great brightness output aids in making it very visible even in outdoor conditions. So we got to applaud uh, both Samsung and Google for bringing this display to market. As you can probably tell here on the front panel, the Google Nexus 10 sports a very clean finish. There are no capacitor buttons to actually break up its looks. Uh, but what we do have here are two speakers, left and right. The speaker grills on the sides here. Below the screen, uh, you can't make it out right now, but you have the uh, Pulse LED notification light. And up top, you have the front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera, which has the ability to shoot 720p videos. Along the tablet's left trim, we have the 3.5mm headset jack and the micro USB port for charging and data connectivity. Well, on the right, we're relieved to find that it's sporting a micro HDMI port for easy video out functionality. Meanwhile, on top edge, we have the dedicated power button and also the volume control. They're raised above the surface and they exhibit really nice springy responses. And on the bottom side of the tablet, we find its proprietary uh, connection dock port with the pins there, so it's going to accept some future accessories. And finally, in the rear of the Nexus 10, we have its 5 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. I have the microphone right there. It has the ability to shoot 1080p videos. Interestingly enough, there's a notch right here towards the right-hand side, which enables us to remove the cover here. And from what it looks like, it has placeholders for SIM cards for cellular connectivity of some sort. But, of course, we know it's available on Wi-Fi only right now. Since this is a uh, Nexus device we're dealing with, it's naturally sporting a vanilla Android experience. A new flavor of Jelly Bean to be specific, it's uh, Android 4.2. Now, if you've used a uh, Jelly Bean device or even an ice cream tablet of late, uh, the interface here should be very familiar. It doesn't really drastically depart from the usual styling that we've seen in the past. And you can tell that from the app panel here and the, how it's broken up between the apps and widgets. Identical thing with uh, Ice Cream Sandwich and even uh, uh, the previous version of Jelly Bean. It has a wealth of personalization thanks to all the cool, neat widgets. As a whole, though, it's sporting a more minimalistic look. It doesn't have the uh, futuristic look of a uh, honeycomb from before. It's a little bit more toned down. But there are a couple of new things, new features specific to this tablet optimized version of Android 4.2. And in our experience, we did notice some crashes and even some restarts every now and then. 
So the first difference between this and the smartphone version of Android 4.2 is that now the app panel is broken down to, uh, you have the app panel that's separate from the connectivity feature. So if you do swipe down from top left corner, you get the notifications panel and of course there are actionable items with them. And if you swipe down from top right, you get access to some of the uh, connectivity features which is very useful just because now you don't have to go into the settings to get them. And on top of that you have also the ability to modify the brightness. Additionally, the second thing that we're really excited to find with Android 4.2 Jelly Bean is the support for multiple users. Now, it's specific to only tablets, not smartphones. So essentially, if you're using a tablet with your other, other members of your family, kids, brothers, sisters, whatever, now everyone could have their different user accounts. So what you find with a regular PC, which is great, because now that you could, you could personalize everything and no one has to mess around with the way your widgets are laid out or even the media content on, on there, so everything's separated. Aside from those two things, there isn't really a whole lot separating the uh, smartphone tablet experiences of Android 4.2. You still have things like Google Now, which is your personal digital assistant on the go. Uh, in addition, as far as the uh, core organizer apps are concerned with the Nexus 10, they pretty much rely on a uh, tablet optimized view. For example, here in the calendar, it's uh, optimized for that. Same thing with the people application, but for other things like the calculator or even the, or even the clock app, uh, it's pretty much just a stretched out version of its smartphone counterpart and we would like to see a little bit more optimization for tablet usage. Considering this is an Android tablet, it offers a fantastic email experience with Gmail, similar to what you find on a desktop, and it has the two-panel view to give it an optimized look. Now, the only thing new with it is just the ability to actually quickly archive messages by either swiping left or right on them. Between the two, the landscape keyboard option is more preferable just because it has a spacious layout uh, in addition to the super responsive nature of it. Uh, on top of that, as an alternative, you have the swipe-like swipe -like gestures now in place, so you could use that. As for the portrait option, though, the only thing is that it's just a little bit wide for our thumbs to uh, encompass the entire layout, so it does prove to be a little bit challenging, but regardless of that, it's still very responsive. Surfing the web is such a joy in the Google Nexus 10 just because we're agreed to fast page load, smooth kinetic scrolling, pinch zooming, and proper rendering. Additionally, uh, you have such a high resolution display that adds just some poppiness to the sharpness and clarity of everything. And finally, with the Chrome browser, it has some very useful gestures to quickly navigate between open tabs. Unlike the Nexus 7, which is powered by a quad-core processor, the Google Nexus 10 employs a dual-core 1.7 GHz uh, ARM Cortex A15 based Exynos processor with 2 GB of RAM and has a quad-core GPU. Now the performance is good for the most part, you could tell it's moving very steadily even with the live wallpaper, but whenever it's running multiple tasks at hand, sometimes we do notice some slowdown and lag with its operation, but for the most part, it's pretty effective and quick with basic tasks, opening up applications like so. Um, for other things like gaming, it still exhibits a pretty good amount of fluidity with its execution, but as we said already, every now and then we notice just some minor hiccups along the road. Not surprisingly, the Google Nexus 10 is relying on the Google Play Music application for its music player, so it's very familiar. Conventional by today's standards, but we still like the added 3D carousel effect that it has going on uh, when you're browsing through your selection of uh, music. As far as the audio quality with its two speakers, its left and right speakers, it's surprisingly very good. Poppy tones, vibrant, uh, doesn't strain or have any distortion with it, the loudest volume setting, so we're pr very pleased with its overall output. Even though you might not find too many videos that are in higher resolution than 1080p, the Google Nexus 10 is still a fantastic device for watching videos. Now, in the box, it has support for video codecs like MPEG-4 and H.264, but surprisingly absent are DivX and XVID. But regardless of that, it's able to play our video here, which is encoded in MPEG-4 1920 by 1080 resolution, and you can tell it's moving at a good rate, sharp details, and vibrant colors, so it's more than fitting for the experience. Sure, we might think about using a tablet to take photos and videos, but if it's the only thing on hand, we wouldn't hesitate to use it. Now, as far as the camera UI is concerned here, um, it's pretty much identical to what we find on Android 4.2 for smartphones. Uh, it has an uncluttered appearance here, uh, minimalistic layout. You have your shutter key on the right-hand side, and there's very minimal uh, manual modes and shooting settings here, which is rather unfortunate. We'd like to see a little bit more, but you have the cool new feature of Photosphere, which allows you to take 
a 360 degree view of your surrounding and it's pretty neat though um, especially later on when you preview it just because um, it's similar to what you find with street view on Google Maps so once you take the photosphere you're able to actually look at it from a 360 degree view which is pretty nice overall. For a tablet, we really can't complain about the quality produced by the 5 megapixel autofocus camera of the Google Nexus 10. In general, um, it's pleasant as a whole, especially with outdoor shots taken with plenty of sunlight. De details are on the average side, but colors tend to be dull and devoid, which is especially, especially noticeable with the LED flash on. In lower lighting situations, uh, it exhibits more noise and some graininess. Of course, that's expected with uh, most devices, but as a whole, um, it's decent enough to accept. Likewise, we could say the same thing about its 1080p high definition video recording quality. It's not stunning, but we're pleased by the results. Details tend to be on the average side. It moves at 29 frames per second, so it's fairly smooth. Uh, but the distractions that we have is just some of the artifacting that's going on when you're panning and also the uh, jumpy exposure. Who knows what the culprit is, whether it's the uh, enhancements found with Android 4.2 or the optimizations with its dual-core processor, but the Google Nexus 10 offers fantastic battery life. In fact, its 9,000 milliamp hour battery enables us to get two days of normal usage out of a full charge, which is more than ideal for a tablet like this, especially considering it's packing a high-resolution display. Honestly, folks, Google really impresses us with the Nexus 10. There's a lot to like about this tablet. It just reestablished what we expect out of uh, tablets in general. Um, knowing that it's priced at $400 makes it even better. Uh, on top of that, it's not a cheap tablet per se. You have some really nice specs inside. You have a dual-core processor, that high-resolution display, which is the sharpest thing we've seen out there. On top of that, you have all the comforts of a full Premiere tablet. You have a front-facing camera, a rear camera as well. Fantastic battery life and all the cool features associated with Android 4.2 Jelly Beans so there's still you know uh, plenty of stuff to like about it and uh, the competition will really need to step back and realize what this has to offer to compete against it just because you're getting a whole lot of value for the buck and honestly if you're in the market for a tablet this holiday season this is something you want to take a look at just because it has that great combination of having a fantastic price point good features and a great performance in all aspects so if you'd like to Learn more about the Google Nexus 10 guys, you could check out our website, phonewina.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching.